The Raptors lose to the Brooklyn Nets 106-102. Welcome to Raptors Tonight. I'm Randy Urban, joined by Jack Armstrong, Javon Shepard, and Paul Jones. Jonesy, uh, that, that was a pretty intense game for two teams, you know, solidified in the standings, more or less. Uh, both teams really wanted it. Well, listen, Javon and I talked about that on the radio. Last night, the NBA got what they wanted. 13 of the 14 games, with the exception of San Antonio Memphis, had seating implications. This one tonight did not. But what you saw was guys trying to take advantage of an opportunity, and you saw personal and professional pride in wanting to get a win. That's what it's about. Never mind what your record is. If you're out on the schoolyard, it's – it's, I always peel it back to the basics. If we're out running at the park, I want to win. I don't care if my team had lost three or four games in a row and, and I had to sit and wait to play with another five. When you're on the court, you want to win. And, and I thought it was really great for the Raptors to, uh, to put people again in situations where they had an opportunity to learn and see what they can do. And that includes – head coach Darko Ryakovich drawing up stuff and managing the clock and managing stuff at the end of the game. I thought he did an excellent job by keeping that one time out till he really, really needed it at the end of the game. Uh, uh, Javon, it was a, a good old fashioned shootout there between quickly and, and, and shooter. Certainly, uh, certainly some, some, uh, you know, some tensions and some, some feelings being heard out there in that one. Yeah. And you know what? I think when, you're playing against your former team, right? And Dennis Schroeder. And the way, you know, he left, he came here and, and everybody knows he wanted to be here because he thought, you know, the keys were going to be handed to him and he was going to be the lead point guard and you get shipped off, right? And you could tell at the end of this game, it wasn't about X's and O's. I think he had about 15 points in the fourth quarter alone. This wasn't a game of X's and O's. This was give me the basketball. Let me put my team on my back. I want a victory. I don't care what point we are in the season. We have a couple games left. I want to come out here with a victory. And and he did that. So credit him. But I thought, you know, Emmanuel quickly, he grew today, right? Mm-hmm. From right from the tip, you know, they put credit. the basketball in his hands to score the basketball, be a decision Let's maker, start. be a scorer, be a facilitator. And he handled all those responsibilities well, right? Um, You know, it was unfortunate that last pass that he had to Garrett Temple just didn't get there in time, whether he threw it at his toes a bit too low for him or not. But well, he had himself a heck of a game, 32.7 rebounds and nine assists. But it was more about his game management that impressed me. And you can see when he was off of the floor, the team struggled tonight. But big time play for him. And, and obviously that credit Dennis Schroeder for coming out with a victory. Yeah. Jack, Jack, let's expand a little bit on, on quickly because when you watch him, it's hard not to be excited about next year. Just with the growth that he's made as a Raptor, it, it's it's been paramount. Well, look at his last three games. Yeah. He's almost averaging a triple-double. And, you know, his free throw shooting, oh, my God. For a point guard, it's a coach's dream. Uh, and, you know, and he's showing all the phases, right? He's showing playmaking. He's showing toughness, getting getting himself in with the big fellas, rebound the ball. Uh, he's showing you shot-making on the perimeter, uh, the mid-range, at the rim, the floater scoring at the free throw line he's giving it you know so he's showing you every level of his game so yeah you know like you start saying you start kind of visualizing when you have a healthy roster what it's going to look like and he's going to be one of your lead dogs next year yeah Mm -hmm. and Jonesy, another guy grady dick you know he's kind of on that same type of trajectory where it doesn't seem to be flattening out i i I just think and and listen uh I know people are probably hearing, tired of hearing us mention this and talk about this, but I do look forward to next year with great optimism. I mean, Jack and Javon just talked about about Emmanuel quickly. Grady tonight, I I think he made five or six Mm three-pointers. They ran the play at the end for him, and he got himself free for a really good look. So it is growth. It is. He's, He's... it's not only growth in his play, Randall. I think what's really important that people don't see, there is growth in his confidence too. Like that's the big thing. Like once a guy gets to a point where he's confident and he feels he belongs and he can do it, then it doesn't matter what kind of a game he has. You know, my guy Jack's a Yankee fan. 
And and we always talk about this. Bottom of the eighth inning, you're down two runs. You got two on, and your best hitter comes to the plate, but he's 0 for 4. Oh, you better believe he's digging in. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and it's, it's about the confidence that I can do this. And so the more Grady gets put in these kinds of situations – and the better he becomes, the more confident he becomes, too. And it's hard to knock a guy off that perch when he's feeling that. So I, I like his physical development, and I like his mental development, too. Mm-hmm. Josie, just to add to that, too, because I, over this year, there's been so much discourse and a lot of conversation comparing Grady Dick to some of the some of the players that are in his draft or drafted later. And they're making comparisons to players that have completely different games, right? When you when you look at Grady Dick and you're trying to find a measurable or a comparable player or where he should be in his development, you have to look at guys like J.J. Reddick, Corey Kispert, you know, guys that are have come into the league as specialty guys. And when you look at where Grady is compared to where those guys were at this point in their career, he's actually ahead. It's taken those specialty yeah. guys two or three years before they can really impact a team. So I, I look at Grady and I, I say, listen, I got to compare you to similar guys, similar profile players in this league. And he's done well this year, right? Now going into the offseason, yes, he has to have a big offseason, getting his body, you know, prepared for his, his sophomore year, his second year, um, and, you know, the adjustment to the game, the agility and so forth. But I think with knowing what you have to work on and the speed of the game now, completely different player. Go ahead, you know, and, and Javon, you bring up two interesting. You bring up two interesting names, Javon. You know, you look at Kispert, and you look at JJ Reddick. Look how much bigger and stronger Kispert is from the time he came out of Gonzaga. Yeah. He's yeah. a good. He's a good player. He's on a terrible team. You put Kispert on a good team. He's a terrific fifth guy. You know, he's not going to be one of your top three guys, but that to me, that's what Grady Dick's going to be. With all due respect to JJ Reddick. You know, he was never a top two guy on a roster, but man, oh man, he was like a third, fourth guy on your team, and he was really good. And and it, you look at both; they just they got bigger, they filled out, they got stronger. And I look at a guy like Grady Dick. I'm just looking at all this stuff that's happening, and I'm going, can you put him on the floor with four good players? Can he be that fifth guy that spaces the floor, cuts, passes, makes open shots, and makes your team better? Yeah, absolutely. You're going to have to hide him sometimes defensively. Schroeder had his way at times in space with him. It's going to happen. But you know what? We're in an offensive league. All this nonsense about Zach Eady, you know, drop coverage and all this stuff. You you draft for talent. You draft for offense. And you figure out how to teach those talented players how to guard. Jack, to that, to that point as well, you know, you talk to a number of GMs and a number of, you know, NBA scouts. I think what – the general fan doesn't understand is if you draft a rotational player in the in in the lot not not necessarily in the lottery in the draft first round or second round you've actually won right so yeah and you know that you've, you've got a rotational player already and i think that's where we have to you know temper our expectations as well is that for for most of these executives if you can come up with a rotational guy you've done well in the draft mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah and listen and it's Boy. about development too guys like that's the other thing too we forget like Jack, you know, we've talked about this, you and I, many times. Uh, you know, two years ago at this time, Grady was pinning a corsage on some girl and going to the prom. I mean, he's, he, you know, he's he's two years removed from AAU, and he's playing with Me hardened too. veterans, 14, 15-year, <laughs> you know, players. So I, I, I'm just willing to give the kids some time, and I, I like where it's going. I mean, yeah. you know. I look at a guy like Ochai Abaji, who's getting a chance to play in a situation like this. So, you know, I, 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 I'm excited for next September. Yeah. And by the way, you mentioned, you mentioned the prom. I, I'm here in Brooklyn, my hometown. I went to three junior proms and two it. senior proms. You know, well, you know, wow. I, was, I was kind of my own junior prom, my own senior prom, and I was like a rented date as well. So, uh, <laughs> wow. So, uh, I, 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 had, I did five senior. proms, man. I had to buy oh, Jack, out, <laughs> Jack, you're out kicking the coverage, baby. You're, you are you <laughs> are out of your weight class. How many problems you went to, Javon? 14? Man, I wish I went to mine. I, I didn't have the juice like Jack, so I had to, you know, I, I got to live through Jack. I didn't have the juice, Jack. <laughs> Randall, I went to one, but I didn't have a date. Yeah. I went with three of my buddies on the basketball team who didn't have dates either. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I went to one. It was meh, meh. <laughs> Overrated. Um, yeah, real real quick, guys. What do you think about Javon Freeman Liberty? I mean, he had a career high 20 last night. He was solid again today, 12 points. He was plus two, I think, in a losing game. It is you know, he was he's a combo guard in the G League. I think they want him to be a point guard. Can he be a point guard in this league? Hey, hey, he's another guy. The confidence. He's playing like he belongs. He's making some mistakes as a point guard, but that's growing into the role. But every night, you just watch his his play. It is gotten consistently better every night yeah. um and and again i go back to the, the you know the sports psychologist in me goes back to the confidence javon and i were talking about this on the radio tonight this kid's playing and saying hey man i belong here i can do this and and he's growing into that role as well yeah i, I think it's pretty simple can he get the ball over half can he make open shots he's done that oh. defensively he actually does some things instinctively there's a number of times where you know, his def- his the opponent, the offense may have gotten, the guard may have gone around him in a ball screen action. And it, right away, he recognizes a big steps up. He's got to crack back and take away, you know, the, the, the offensive possession positioning for that, that big in the dunker area. So just little things like that. I think he gets it, that it factor. He does, it doesn't show up on the stat sheet and the box score, but offensively, he lets the game come to him, does all the simple things. And then defensively, there's some things he does instinctively. All right, guys, great stuff. Let's stop it there. Next game for the Raptors. Second last one of the season Friday night in Miami against the Heat. Tip-off goes at 8 p.m. Eastern. Raptors tonight will go live on YouTube shortly after the game. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.